Welcome to Motivational Monday by Blessed Be the Gift. Hey everyone, how are you guys doing? So I am here in my living room and it is, uh, uh, what day of the week is it? Uh, Motivational Monday. <laughs> and um, I'm telling you, it has been so busy. If you hear little giggles, like little girls in the house, my son has over his friends from the neighborhood. And um, that's really what this video is going to be about, is um, having a happy home. And I'm telling you, even though I'm divorced, God has placed me three streets over from my ex-husband and his girlfriend. And I have been able to maintain stability for my boys and keeping them right in the school district that they're in, keeping them right in the um, area in which we've lived for you know, my, my, my 10 year olds really a whole life. And so, um, I have, um, really made it a priority to keep that stability for my son. I made a priority in my life to maintain my apartment, even though it's fallen apart and it's kind of trashy. I, um, don't have the best neighbors. Um, but uh, God has kept me right where I am. And um, so I want to talk about having a happy home and what the Bible says about having a happy home. Um, it's just something that I feel like as a Christian, God has commanded us, women especially, um, to have that happy home to be a Proverbs 31 wife and woman in our home. We have certain guidelines that God has given to us um, about keeping the peace in the home, about maintaining our home. Um, when I was married, my husband and I agreed that it would be um, behoove us to have me be a stay-at-home mom. During that time period, um, I got to bond big time with my children and I got to uh, take care of my husband and our home. And, um, you know, I have a lot of pride in my home. I have a lot of joy in taking care of my home as a Christian. And um, I definitely want to do some more homemaking videos here on YouTube. Um, but it is not going to be until after my gastric bypass surgery um and that is because i can't move around as like i should and like i would like to but um i also want to uh do some more diy videos with you and some more home repairs as a single mom um one of the thoughts I remember when I was married was uh, there was one time when I went to go fix the uh, dryer and it wasn't drying. And so my spouse was like, well, I guess we're going to have to call, you know, a professional to come in here and fix this dryer. And um, he was at work one day and I crawled back there in the back behind the dryer. I pushed the dryer forward so I could squeeze back there against the wall. It was dirty. It was nasty. I cleaned it all up. The dryer still wasn't working. I took out the vent. It still wasn't working. And I ended up um, unscrewing the whole back of the dryer. Um, and when he called on his lunch break, he was like, what you doing? And I said, I'm fixing the dryer. And he was like, no, don't do that. Don't take that apart. And you're going to mess it all up. And, and he was upset with me. So by the time he got home, the dryer was fixed. I couldn't believe that God had given me that authority, that power to just go ahead and fix it myself. And um, saved us a lot of money because <laughs> he was going to call professional. But um being a stay-at-home mom, you know, I have mowed, I have done all these things, and um, yeah, I'm not able to do the things that I used to do because of my weight, but um, I do have an appointment this week to get that all figured out, and I am going to be sharing the, um, the uh, progress with you and that weight loss journey that I'm going to be going on, and um, no matter if there is a weight loss surgery or not, 
uh, I know I need to fix the pain in my knees. Um, my knees have been injured due to um, an, a, an accident that I had with my son. And um, I was talking to one of neighbor kids that came over tonight to stay the night with my son. And he said, I remember that. Your son was so excited uh, to see you. He didn't want to be at his dad's. And um, this is a neighbor, you know, and he was just like, I remember you falling backwards and you caught him. You caught your son in your arms. And he goes, I'll never forget that. And I, I, I'll I, never forget it either. You know, it was one of those moments where you're a proud mom and you did what was right. But at the same time, whoo, caused yourself some injury in your knees. And so, you know, you need uh, knee replacements or weight loss surgery or whatever you need to do to get that weight off that uh, those knees and so um, I am gonna do whatever doctors tell me to do at this moment um, you know and I feel really really good because I have never taken any medicines I have never even gotten a speeding ticket I am a rule follower and um, I'm a Christian and I tell the truth and um, you know people can see that in my home they can see that in how I decorate how do I maintain my home they understand that I'm a really great mom and um, it's getting me through life, you know, knowing that I am doing what God has commanded me to do. Um, you know, there's a lot of times where you feel down on yourself as a single mom uh, because, you know, that husband is a lot of times going to lie. Um, I see it all the time on my single mom uh, websites that I'm on. And they lie and they say, oh, she's fat and lazy and she doesn't do anything and all that. Well, you know what, girl? That's all in your husband's head. I'm pretty sure of it. Um, I don't think these men really understand what it takes to be a single mom. I don't think these men understand what it takes to be a mom, period. Um, I can tell you in my marriage, my husband never appreciated me in a homemaker, even though it was his decision for me to stay home. And um, he never really communicated with me about um, the things I did do around the home, the parties I threw for him and his family. Never got a thank you, never were appreciated of it. Um, when I had a, made a guest room for his brother and his family to come stay with us, no thank you no appreciation there either um when i held christmas and i decorated the house for christmas for the kids and i'm the one who bought all the christmas gifts and i'm the one who uh invited family uh, for christmas gatherings and families that were out of town i um let them come over and the hosting that I did in our home, our marital home. I have so many videos and pictures still of me being a homemaker and um, a lot of the Facebook memories pop up. And when I show the pictures and some of them are even on my Pinterest page, if I remember right. But, um, you know, people love the way that I decorate and they love the way that I host and um at church the other day we were talking about you know being a host and the pastor says what would you do if jesus christ was coming to your house for dinner you know or he said what if he came into the fellowship hall for lunch and i said okay everybody we're gonna go meet jesus christ in the fellowship hall right now for lunch what would you do would you be a mary a martha would you prepare your home would you get everything in order would you try to do uh what you could to clean up house real quick would you try to organize would you try to um make it really super nice or would you prepare the food would you lay everything out um fine linens and china and what would you do um and it really made me start thinking about um preparing preparing ourselves as we see the day approaching of god's return preparing our spirit that we have within us and um you know having um the holy spirit live in us as single parents as we are um dealing with that separation of our families in our homes where god has called us to all um stay in 
unity with our spouses and our families in our homes. And I think about how divorce really affects that. Um, one thing that happened to me last night was the new girlfriend of my ex-spouse, she said, this is her home. And I'm like thinking, no, my children's measurements are on that wall. It's not her home. My handprint is, is there with my children's um, in the concrete. And I'm the one who picked out that home. So I keep thinking, you know, she can say that that's her home now, but God gave me that home with my spouse. That was our home. And um, I was thinking how I could never be back in that home because of the evilness that has been allowed in that home, the sin that's been allowed in that home. I could never be with anybody who had a wife, who had a family, and he up and left. And just, I don't know how to say it without sounding really bad, but um, you know, when you have a spouse that leaves you for someone else, and then he makes that person be, um, a trade-in for you and your family that you had, um, they're trying to replace you. They're trying to um, have seconds. They're trying to gaslight and they're trying to love bomb that other person, the new one, um, in order to get them to... Um, think that you know all this is for her and it wasn't it was for me and i was just thinking i feel so bad uh for her and and um how he had all those memories but it wasn't with her in that home and i keep thinking um i don't know how people do that when they go through a divorce how do they move that new person in and um, with knowing that they had a family at one time, they had all their dreams that they ever wanted. And, um, you know, we had a really, really happy home. And um, we had Jesus in our home. And we had a lot of love for family, a lot of um, good times in our home. And, and um, now, you know, you couldn't pay me a million dollars to be back in that home. Um, and even on that property, I don't want to be around it. Um, and I don't like the feeling of being near that home anymore. Home is where the heart is, but you have to choose to love that home. You have to choose to um, have it be yours. And I was thinking about how when me and my husband picked out that home, the long conversations we had. I remember sitting in the living room floor, it empty the first night we bought the house. I remember us um, talking about our future. We talked about having grandchildren run around in that yard and uh, we sat there together just sitting on the floor with our backs up against the wall. And we were talking about love and we were talking about having a happy home and the vision that we saw in our home, the things that we wanted to do with our home. We talked about the upgrades. We talked about all the things that we wanted to do and it can't be replaced with someone new. It can't. Um, and I feel bad for her to know that he always had that with someone else and it wasn't her and how that would make me feel if I was the other woman. And, um, it made me feel really bad and to, um, think of what a happy home is. And, um, it's not about, um, how you decorate all it's really about is 
being with the ones that you love, having that family unit, and having that relationship with Jesus Christ. When you have a relationship with Jesus Christ, you understand what God commands of a family, what he de desires for a husband and wife and uh, children and that family unit. And um, you can look at life and the world and the way the world will accept just um, abandoning your family and how the world will just accept uh, trading your wife in for a, a new model. New is not always better. And um, it's just a replacement. It's a um, second place. And um, I don't know if I could ever put myself in a situation where I'm in second place. I couldn't do it. Um, and so I, I want to, as a single mom, I want to keep moving forward in keeping my home happy and having a happy home. And what does the Bible say about it? First Timothy 5, 8. But if anyone does not provide for his relatives, and especially for the members of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Um, in my case, uh, I was unequally yoked with my spouse, and so I was the believer. And um, if it was me who left my family, if it was me who moved in a new boyfriend into my home, if it was me, who denied the faith and did not provide for my children, who is the one who separated that family, I would be worse than an unbeliever. But when you call yourself a Christian and you go to church religiously and you are um, stating that you have God living in you and then you divide that family and you separate everyone and you attack that spouse, that ex-spouse of yours. If you are moving in someone new into that home, if you are living your life in a selfish manner, then you are worse than an unbeliever. That means so much that God just says that. Like, it is so wrong. And this is why God hates divorce. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Philippians 4, 4. You guys ever sing that song? Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. And again, I say rejoice. We should sing around, me and you. <laughs> um, you know, I love that song, and I love walking around my home and singing that song. Um, Hebrews 10, 26 through 31. For if we go on sinning deliberately after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment and a fury of fire that will consume the adversaries. Anyone who has set aside the law of Moses dies without mercy on the evidence of two or three witnesses. How much worse punishment do you think you will deserve by the one who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has profaned the blood of the covenant by which he had sacrificed and has outraged the spirit of grace? For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. Whoa. So right there, he says, you know, when there's two or three witnesses, that's why in a marriage you always have to have your two witnesses. Those two people who are going to say that they witnessed that marriage, that they are in agreement with you in that marriage, and in my case, it was my father and my ex-spouse's father. They signed as our witnesses that they are in agreement with our marriage. We had my children there. We did vows with all of us together. Our family surrounded us. And then we had a big reception with our Body of Christ church members. And um, 
throughout our marriage and even throughout the divorce. They have always been there supporting and loving and um, being there, being our witnesses and their and even sharing their testimony of my marriage to my spouse. And so um, that is something we need to have in our homes, friendships, family. Philippians 4, 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So, um, you know, sometimes you don't understand the circumstances, what's happened, what's going on. And um, so we may not understand, you know, what's happening in our life, in our homes, um, when, you know, we have an ex-spouse who abandoned us in our home and kicked us out. But, um, you know, God... God knows. God knows that that home that I had uh, was chosen by God. Um, he is the one who put me and my spouse together. He's the one who um, gave us that family, you know, on our wedding night. And um, he's the one who um, picked out that home for us in the neighborhood. And he's the one who has kept me three streets over even through my divorce and um i always question why why am i three streets over from my ex-spouse and this new girlfriend of his um i just don't understand what happened to my marriage and um you know the peace that god has given me it surpasses all my understanding it doesn't even matter the why uh things have happened in my life um it has happened you just keep praying for the peace of God and for that understanding and guard your heart. You know, um, it really hurts when another woman is taking over your home that God gave you. Um, I'm not going to lie. And, um, you know, just the thought that you can be replaced. And as she was claiming that home to be her home, I was sitting there thinking she has no idea. She has no idea what I know. She doesn't know what I know. And um, I can see what I've had to go through is beginning to happen to her. And I couldn't help but feel sorry for her because one day she will know. And um, she'll understand that uh, the same thing that happened to me is going to be happening to her. Matthew 5, 3, 12. Blessed is the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. So um, in your home, you need to always have those Bible verses that are encouraging to those who are going to be left behind. You need to have those Bible verses. Here's your home. Needs to understand and know that uh, you are a Christian. And I really do hope that the sign, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord with my last name on it, says um, that. And I hope that she does know that that came from my mother-in-law and that came as a gift to me and my spouse for our wedding. It was our first wedding gift. And um, for me and my house, we, me and my husband have decided we were gonna serve the Lord. Now, um, I am gonna continue to serve the Lord no matter if my spouse walks away from that or not. Psalm 1-1, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits the seat of scoffers. So we as Christians, we do not want to seek wicked counsel. Um, we do not want to surround ourselves with other people, have relationships with other people who are not following Jesus Christ. And um, I know as a Christian, I could never uh, be with someone else knowing that God is not in that relationship. And, um, I could never live in a home, not with the knowledge of knowing that God is not in that home, in that family, in that relationship. Joshua 1, 8, this book of the law, the Bible shall not depart from your mouth, 
but you shall meditate it on day and night, and that you be careful to do according to all that is written in it. For you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. You know, that's a verse I've never read before, but I really like it because it's saying that the Bible, God's Word, the Holy Spirit living in God's Word, you know, He breathed the words into uh, life, and he, bre he gave you breath as a human, and um, and as a child of God, the Holy Spirit comes within you and lives with you when you have that relationship with him and um it's for you to prosper it's you know for you to have good success and um he will give you the understanding of god's word and what it means and when he says that he hates divorce he hates division of family when god says he wants you to depart from sin and these are the list of things that you shall not do the ten commandments and when he says these are the things that you should not be part of in this wicked world um like having relationships with others um that is in sin then um you know we as christians we have to call it out as sin and we have to say what is right and what is wrong according to God's word. Nobody else's judgment matters except for God's word. And so we need to meditate it on day and night. And whenever I have difficulties with my ex-spouse, I run to the Bible um, because I want to meditate on what God's want me to do. I mean, my flesh will, um, you know, intervene but I always have to reset myself and I need to keep my focus on what is it that God is calling me to do. He's calling me to use my journey and be a witness. So that's what I'm going to keep doing um, as I'm moving forward in my life. Revelation 21, 4. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. And um, I love that verse because God counts your tears, women. He knows what you're going through. He knows the pain. Um, he knows what you're going through if you're divorced. He has um, heard every cry that I have cried out to him. And um, I can see him working in my life. And, um, you know, God will prevail. You know, God will take away this pain that I'm in, um, health-wise, financially, with my ex-spouse, anything that is coming against me in my life, um, I know that God has got it. And um, I, as a Christian, can be confident that God's got it. And, um, you know, he has a reason why he's chosen us um, and he doesn't make mistakes. So when you are choosing your home and you're choosing the decisions to have a happy and healthy home and with your family and um, your daily life in your home, the decisions you make as a single mom, as a married wife, um, we need to, um, you know, consider what God has given to us and the commandments of his word. And we need to put on... Um, that armor of God daily. We need to put on the, you know, his word and the sword of the spirit daily in our walk with him. And uh, it's very difficult to do in this wicked world that we live in where people are doing whatever they want to do. And um, we need to make sure as Christians that we uh, don't dwell on the earth um, and that we need to keep our eyes focused on God. Uh, 1 John 4, 8, anyone who does not l love does not know God because God is love. Um, if you have a spouse who's walked away from your family and um, love for his spouse, then it's because he um, it's because he doesn't love God anymore. That's 1 John 4, 8. That's what it says. 1 John 1, 9, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful talking about God is faithful and he's just he's a just God and he will forgive us of our sins and he will cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness 
We are all sinners. We all fall short of the glory of God. And he is the way and um, he's the only one who can save us from our own sins. 1 Peter 3, 7. Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, since they are hearers with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. Um, husbands have to live with their wives and um, have understanding that, um, you know, God honored that marriage. God is the one who anointed that marriage. And God is the one who put you with your wife and um, there is no separation um, among two Christians. There is none. It's not possible. And um, we always need to remember that, you know, as Christians. This channel is about being a Christian. So as a Christian, we have to understand God's word. And the Holy Spirit will give us that knowledge. Um, if you are talking to a non-believer, uh, they're not going to understand. It's like talking to a brick wall. They are not going to hear anything you say. And um, it really doesn't matter if you get loud. They, they're not going to listen. Hebrews 13.4 Let marriage be held in honor among all. And let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexual, immortal, and adulterers. You do not want to allow sexual immorality in your marriage bed and in your home. It will destroy it. 1 Timothy 6.10 For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evils. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and has pierced themselves with many pangs. You know, um, that's a big one too. It's not about if you live in an apartment. It doesn't matter if you live in a great big ginormous ca castle of a house. It matter if you're a king or a queen of a nation. You, um, as a Christian, need to be able to save your money, take care of your homes. We need to be able to give to others and um, don't have love of money. When you're going through a divorce, take care of your children financially. Take care of your wife uh, financially. And um, help. Uh, you know, like you said, like it said earlier, you don't want to be considered an unbeliever because you have walked away from your family. I read this yesterday. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So even if you're divorced and you're suffering um, because of the loss, the grieving process of your broken marriage, um, maybe you lost your home and your family has been divided, and um, we still need to continue to pray for our ex-spouse. Uh, and pray without ceasing and give thanks for all the circumstances, you know, give thanks for your marriage, give thanks to your spouse, give thanks to God for your children and the home that you have. And, um, you know, even though my ex's girlfriend was claiming that house of hers, I was thinking of all the memories that I have with my husband in, um, that house. And, um, our private times in our bedroom and I remember all of the family laughter that was in that home and the time sitting around the table praying as a family for others the Bible studies that we had with friends and I will never ever forget those memories the good times that we had with family and friends and um, with each other and um, that is something that she'll never have is my memories and so as a Christian uh, I need to be able to accept um, the decisions that have been made by the leader of my family which was my spouse 
and um, understand that as a godly woman and a Christian wife and mother, I have done what God has commanded me to do. And I can raise my head up real strong knowing that um, I have seeked God. And I like this verse right here, Colossians 3, 1 through 25. If then you have been raised with Christ, I was raised with Christ since I was five years old, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Let your minds on things that are above, not on the things here on the earth, for you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in Jesus. So I can't live that kind of life where I'm lying and cheating on my spouse. I can't have that sexual immorality. I can't have that um, removal from God because I have him in my life. When Christ who is in your life appears, then you will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Um, I read this verse yesterday. I just love it. really makes me think of the decisions that have been made in my marriage and um, how I am free now as a Christian single mom to make the decisions that God has um, asked me to do. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ephesians 5.22-23, Wives, submit to your own husbands as the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body and his self, its Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up to her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word. Um, you know, that just shows the order that we are to be in, in our marriages. Uh, God says, husband, you're the leader. God says, love, you're a wife. Women, respect your husbands. So when it says that, um, if you are a woman and you are feeling loved in that marriage, you are automatically going to want to submit and respect to uh, your spouse. And I can say that in my marriage, I respected and I um, didn't always do what my spouse wanted me to do, but we were unequally yoked. And um, when it came against uh, God's word, I couldn't do it. I couldn't uh, do it anymore. So um, I am now moving forward, making that decision to uh, not lie and cheat and steal. And uh, um, I'm, I'm not going to break the covenants that God has commanded of me. And I'm going to keep my focus on him. Use my testimony to share what God has done in my life. I'm excited to see what he does. Ephesians 5, 1 through 33. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ loved him as himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But sexual immorality and all impurity or covetousness must not even be the name among you, for it is proper among saints. Let there be no filthiness nor foolish talk nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead let there be thanksgiving. For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexual, immoral, or impure, or who is covetousness, that is, an idolater, uh, this has no inheritance in the kingdom of God. Well, it's because as a Christian, you can't do those things. Um, yeah, you can make mistakes. You may say a bad word. You may call someone a bad name. But at the same time... Are they acting like that name you just called them? You know, um, it's not Christian-like to say those words. But sometimes you have to point out uh, the sin in people's lives. Um, and then let the Holy Spirit speak to them if they have conviction or not. If someone calls me a name, I am definitely going to have that conviction. Uh, because I'm going to question, am I really being that way? A lot to talk about the works of the flesh, you know, having sexual immorality in your home, 
um, having the idolatry in your home, having the um, jealousy and the fits of anger and the rivalry in your home, having that division in your home. Galatians um, 5, 19 through 20 talks about that. And uh, it talks about love in your home. You gotta have that love above all. And if you don't have that love, you're gonna have all these things in your home. And um, if you don't have love in your home for your spouse, you're not gonna have love for God. Um, if you have love God in your home, you're gonna love your wife, you're gonna be a family. And I think that is one thing that God wants us to do in our homes, to have a happy, healthy home and family is to love each other. Second Corinthians 6, 14, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? There is no um, partnership, relationship between um, right and wrong. And uh, those who have decided to not follow God and walk away from God in their lives, they can't be with a Christian. Um, it will not work. There will be that division, that divorce. And, um, you know, I love how God says we are to work together for all things um, good according to his uh, purposes. But when me and my spouse went looking for homes and we decided together as a family, this is where we're going to raise our boys. This is where we're going to raise our children at um we decided that together and uh, we made vows and promises to each other that we will never, ever, ever leave this home. And we would never, ever, ever separate from each other. And um, this is the stuff that goes in my mind when I'm having to deal with situations um, in my singleness, you know, dealing with a divorce. So, um, on the homemaker side of things, I mean, these verses, man, I'll tell you what, they go on and on and on and on and on. Um, I love Proverbs. Everybody read into Proverbs. It talks about, um, inheritance. It talks about leaving a legacy. It talks about, um, you know, don't walk away from your family. It talks about how to help other people who are poor. It talks about husbands loving your wives, wives loving your husbands. Um, let your fountain be blessed and rejoice in the wife of your youth. A lovely deer, a gracious doe, let her breast fill you with all times of delight. Be intoxicated always with her love. <sighs> you know, it's, um, it says you're going to be blessed for those women out there who will follow um, Jesus Christ in their homes. And now I'm a single mom. I get to make those decisions for my children and my life and my family. I am a single mom who gets to choose daily to put on the full armor of God and make those choices to um, be the best mom I can be, to love and protect my children, to, um, you know, keep God center, you know, be that leader that I always wanted my husband to be. And, um, you know, submit to God, you know, my family, uh, my family wouldn't be who they are. They wouldn't be my family if I wasn't blessed by God with them. And so, so as, as Christian single moms, we really need to take care of our home. We need to walk in faith that God has us. We need to um, surrender and pray over our home. You know, every night, pray over your children, pray over your home. I cannot tell you how many times I walked through my house and I prayed over my children um, in that hallway and how um, all the little memories, the small little details are starting to come to me um, as I am thinking of what my ex-husband's girlfriend said. And um, I can just smile because I know that um, it was me. It was me that God chose 
to be married to my husband. It was, it was me who God chose to have that home. It was me who God chose to um, anoint my family within those walls of that home. And uh, I have no regrets. No regrets of um, doing what is right. I have no regrets of um, doing the best I can as a single mom. You know, I feel so very blessed that God put me three streets over from my ex-spouse and his girlfriend. So very blessed. And uh, to maintain stability so my son can have his friends over and they can have a good time. So um, I can uh, keep doing what I'm doing because God's blessed me and I feel so very happy. And um, I hope this was motivation for you, you know, as a single mom, do what ever it takes so i hope this video was encouraging to you i am just really enjoying getting into god's word um he has all of the answers we ever need in there so i hope this was motivational to you for this monday and i pray blessings on you this week and um i can't wait to share my journey with you bye <music>